I think, Chris, if I hand over to you, uh, you wow us on how the Olympics are going, what the challenges are and what the opportunities are, and then after that we'll come back and I think it's open to sort of kind of any question type of approach. Okay, thanks very much, boss. Um, as well as all the stuff that boss talking about, our day-to-day -day business, the Olympics is a key thing. We're planning for it 668 days before the Olympics starts. And if you want a scary statistic, that's 95 Tuesdays. Uh, uh, and I suppose the even more scary statistics... Is I don't need scaring, Chris. OK. <laughs> it's, a, it's more than 1,900 days since we were actually awarded the Olympics on the 6th of July 2005. So a lot of work has been done over that period of time, but a lot still needs to be, do, uh, needs to be done. Um, uh, this is a massive event, and let's make note, it's the greatest show on earth, it's coming to the United Kingdom, 34 separate venues up and down the country, and I'll talk a bit more about that. Probably 10 million tickets will be sold, uh, 14,500 athletes, 205 different countries involved. You can go on and on and on with the statistics, but it's massive. Um, in terms of normal policing events, we normally will have a policing operation around an event which maximum lasts four or five days. Uh, Notting Hill Carnival is a three-day operation. New Year's Eve, thankfully, is just a one-day operation. Uh, the Olympic event is a 78-day operation. That's the day the media centre opens at the Olympic Park to the day the Paralympic Village closes at the end of on the 9th of September. So it's a 78-day operation. Uh, and there's also the massive impact that it's going to have on the city. Uh, I was privileged to get out to Vancouver with a number of my colleagues and see the Winter Olympic Olympics. That's only a quarter of the size of the Summer Olympics and the impact on the city was phenomenal and we expect exactly the same happening in London. So it's a massive event for us, the scale, the size and also it's not just about the events in London. Although there's 70% of the Olympics are taking place in London. There's also 30% taking place in 10 other force areas. So we've got the sailing in Dorset in Weymouth. We've got rowing out in Thames Valley, Eaton Dorney. Uh, the whitewater canoeing up in Hertfordshire, the mountain biking out in Essex, and then there's five other forces in the country that are, are doing football events. So a massive challenge for the police service. Um, uh, in addition to that, for 70 days before the game, from about the 18th of May, uh, the torch will be on a run around the United Kingdom. Uh, and that torch, the plans at the moment from LOCOG are the torch will never be more than 45 minutes away from wherever you are. So a significant challenge for the service. It's not just the Met. We will be relying on colleagues up and down the country because how effective we are at policing the torch in those first few days will form people's views about how effective we're going to be during games time. And we're going to rely on every force in the country for a number of reasons. Yes, they're going to have to assist us in policing the torch. But there are also going to be those parallel events that are going to be put in place, local authorities up and down the country wanting to celebrate the Olympics. And also there will be the mutual aid requirement where we will be asking officers to come and ask, help us police the games. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, we have got massive experience nationally at policing major sporting events uh, and I'm privileged to be working with what I describe as the A-team, people who know what they're doing have done this over many years. We're building on business as usual processes, so the stuff that we know that works where best for all the events, so for matches, whether at Wembley, for major events in central London, the command protocols are exactly the same. Uh, the only slight difference is my role, the role of the National Olympic Security Coordinator, uh, and that's to ensure that I, I act as that consistent voice for the police service, working with the goal commanders in all the forces, um, providing them with sort of advice and guidance to ensure that we're all acting in a consistent manner. A um, couple of planning principles, business as usual is at the heart of it. Also this is a Blue Games, this is a Games that's going to be pre policed by the British Police Service. Uh, it's the traditional unarmed British constable working with the consent of the community in the community and that is at the heart of our planning. Um, and also at the heart of our planning is the fact that this is a sporting event. It's not a security event where a bit of sport's going to be played, it's a sporting event with a security overlay and that's quite important for making sure we set the mindset right. Um, Three key documents at the moment which underpin everything we're doing. There's uh, the Olympic Safety and Security Strategy which sets out what we're trying to achieve. Um, there's the risk assessment which has identified what are the key risks to the Games and therefore that's informing our investment choices about the activities we need to do to try and reduce those risks. Uh, and the last key document is the concept of operations which in effect sets out what the various roles of the partners are in ensuring that the Games pass off safely and securely. Um, there's an overarching safety and security programme being run by the Home Office. Uh, that's entirely right because delivering security is not just about the police service, it's about a range of other government bodies and agencies assisting us. Clearly the emergency services are key but there's also UK Borders Agency, Department of Health and others who are part and parcel of the plan. Uh, and and uh, the programme being run by the Home Office, we've created a small team called the Olympic Policing Coordination Team. 
Uh, they're co-located with the Home Office colleagues and the people who are running the games, LOCOG, the London Organising Committee, and the ODA, who are the people who are actually building the sites, and are all over at Canary Wharf working together. And that concept of one team is, is paying dividends for us. Um, uh, the, the, there are currently um, 27 different projects in the programme. Uh, 17 of them have been commissioned to, to the police service and I would describe the projects in three sorts. There are those that deliver infrastructure, uh, such as a command and control system, upgrades to the radio system that we need, those that deliver kit that officers may need to undertake their duty, and then those that deliver people. Uh, now those are people in a range of different roles. They can be some of the roles which are already operating now, which is like the Olympic Intelligence Cell and the Serious and Organised Crime Project, which is already doing some work, up to mobilising the large number of people that we will need um, during 2012. Um, there's a funding envelope, the boss mentioned the challenge about money. Uh, at the current time there's a funding envelope of £600 million for additional uh, activity that's required. Um, government expects a considerable amount of flex of business as usual asset up and down the country uh, and that's entirely appropriate in some of the disciplines you know protection officers protect protected people during the games protected people will be going to the games so it's quite right that the protected people just that's what their day job is the only challenge for us is during the games we may have up to a hundred protected principles that we need to look after and as a result we're going to have to call on colleagues up and down the country to help us um, but the 600 million uh, is there as to pay for additional funding clearly that is part of the comprehensive spending review uh, decisions and an announcement will be made on the 20th of October uh, and, and that will not only announce potentially what the 600 million will look like in the future, the funding allocated specifically for the Olympics, but also the core funding of the police service and that may have an impact. Uh, if we see a reduction in the core level of policing uh, then we're going to have to look very carefully at the, level, the plans that we've got because of the number of specialists we're going to be asking for the games is, is, uh, is fairly tight to what's available nationally. Um, there's also a contingency there in the event of, a, uh, of 238 million, in the event of a change of the uh, terrorist um, threat level or uh, if there's a new terrorist attack methodology that we haven't seen before that we need to put new control measures in for. Um, in terms of the numbers we're potentially going to be deploying nationally during the games period, obviously there are peaks and troughs during that 78 day period, um, but on the peak days it could be up to 12,000 police officers nationally. Uh, uh, in London it could be up to 9,000 police officers uh, and again we can't do that on our own you know the biggest uh, day calendar for us the event calendar is Notting Hill Carnival on the Monday and that's about 6,000 police officers uh, and that is just over a couple of days and we are talking about an extensive period the games itself is a 17 day period where we will be at fairly high levels so we'll be relying on colleagues up and down the country uh, the challenges around specialists such as protection officers, mounted officers, search officers and firearms officers uh, because clearly we still have to deliver business as usual up and down the country, we still have to protect communities on a day to day basis as well as delivering this event. Um, the, the, the key to any event um, is about partnership, it isn't just about the police service, it isn't just about other organisers, it's about a range of organisations coming together, so it's about us and LOCOG and the other emergency services and our other partners in government all coming together with one plan, uh, we've all got individual elements of it but it's one overarching plan uh, where the key individuals all know each other, have trust and confidence in each other, they know the plan and they can deliver the plan and there's lots of work going on in that at the moment. We've already done a number of exercises where we've brought those key players together and we will continue to do that over the next 668 days. So, I mean, that's a very brief summary and I'm more than willing to ask any, answer any questions about it, but, I mean, the Olympics is a big challenge, no doubt about it, a massive challenge for the service. It's the biggest peacetime operation we've, we've ever had to deliver. I'm confident that we can deliver it, but it is going to require a lot of work. Uh, and with that lot of work, what we'll see is probably the greatest sporting occasion ever taking place within the United Kingdom in 2012. Thank you, Chris. Are we taking questions about the Olympics? Yes.